The federal government is shut down. Uh, we'll be following this story uh, all week just to kind of set the table as to where we are right now. Things took a turn for the worse this Friday when Chuck Schumer went to the White House, ate some cheeseburgers uh, with President Trump. Things looked like they were going well. Uh, Schumer did something that probably not a lot of Democrats thought he would do, which was put substantial funding for the wall, uh, which we've heard about since Trump launched his campaign in 2015, said he would provide full funding for the first year uh, of the wall, the funding that in fact was requested when earlier this year the Trump administration put out his budget. That seemed like it would seal things. Schumer came back from the meeting and said, looks like things are moving forward and that we are making good progress, although the final deal isn't yet. But a couple of hours later, he heard from John, John Kelly, uh, the White House Chief of Staff, who is an immigration hardliner before chief, being Chief of Staff. He was enforcing Trump's Muslim ban. And Kelly told Schumer that, in fact, this offer didn't go far enough and the White House would need uh, a lot more. Another key player in this uh, is Stephen Miller, one of the White House policy advisors who's also a real hardliner on immigration and is seeking to drastically reduce legal immigration uh, to about half the levels that it, it is today within 10 years. So that happened Friday. Friday at midnight, Saturday morning at midnight, the government shut down and since then, um, we haven't really seen much action. Uh, Trump has had no public events. He has held no meetings. He hasn't even made any phone calls uh, to Democrats. According to one report, uh, he spent uh, most of Saturday uh, watching old videos of himself uh, blaming Obama uh, for the government shut down in 2013. I think we have uh, some footage of that we can show you now. Who's going to bear the brunt of the responsibility if indeed there is a sh is shutdown of our government? Well, if you say who gets fired, it always has to be the top. I mean, problems start from the top and they have to get solved from the top. And the president's the leader and he's got to get everybody in a room and he's got to lead. And he doesn't do that. He doesn't like to. In uh, 25 years and 50 years and 100 years from now, when the government is, you know, they talk about the government shutdown, they're going to be talking about the president of the United States. There was some tweeting. Uh, there was some grousing. He missed his big fundraiser uh, in Mar-a-Lago to celebrate the one-year anniversary of his inauguration, which wasn't uh, uh, very popular with him. Uh, so now we find ourselves Monday morning. Um, McConnell has, uh, cr has created a deal uh, which at this point seems to have only persuaded other Republicans who weren't for uh, the package that came up uh, for a vote on Friday night. And what he's saying is, if the Democrats right now support a three-week continuing resolution to keep the government funded, uh, at, on February the 8th, he will take up some legislation involving uh, the Dreamers, the young um, people who came to the United States as children uh, and are now seeking legal protection. They have their legal protection taken away by Trump in the fall when he canceled the DACA program, and that program is officially ended uh, starting the beginning of March. So uh, anyway, uh, that's what he's offering. Um, it's not much because there's no corollary promise on the House to even take up such legislation. Uh, again, it only, he is saying, McConnell's only saying that he would do this if the Democrats not only vote for this bill, but vote for another bill on February the 8th that would extend government funding even further. So he's really asking the Democrats not only to take his word for it, but also to trust that the House, despite the fact they're not making any promises at all, will then follow suit and also pass this legislation. We saw something similar happen in 2013. Um, or a couple times during the Obama administration when the Senate passed comprehensive immigration reform and then the House didn't take it up. So we're going to have a vote on that uh, in a few minutes, uh, and we'll see what happens. It looks like some of the Republicans like Lindsey Graham and Jeff Flake, who have been critical, it's been enough for them. 
uh, to come home. Uh, and then we're going to have a vote today uh, around noon and we'll see how that goes. But right now, it doesn't look like the government shutdown is ending anytime soon. And I see that we have some questions, uh, so I will take one now. Judith asks, um, is it true that our military will not be paid their salary during the shutdown? Well, uh, the military keeps working. As of right now, uh, they are not going to be paid. Obviously, it takes a little while for that to have any impact because you don't get paid every single day. You get paid every couple of weeks. So until you have a next pay period, you're not really working without pay. The Democrats have proposed uh, a, n a number of times. Um, Senator um, Claire McCaskill is the one who's, who's usually proposing this to say, hey, let's pass separate legislation saying as long as this government shutdown continues, the military will get paid. That's what happened during the last government shutdown in 2013. Um, the military uh, continued to get paid because of that, but Republicans have objected to that. So right now, the military is not is is working and is not getting paid. It hasn't had any impact yet because we haven't hit the next payday, uh, but it will soon, uh, and and that's what's happening. Uh, it's it's unfortunate, uh, especially if you're living paycheck to paycheck. It could be just a few days before uh, this starts to have a big impact. How do you think this will affect the midterm elections? Well, that's the question everyone is asking. Uh, I think that Senate Republicans and Trump have convinced themselves that this is a positive for them. That's why they're not really moving off of their initial position from Friday night. In fact, their negotiating position right now explicitly is, we will not negotiate until you capitulate. Uh, I guess McConnell has taken a micro step in saying that in some future time we will take up this DACA legislation if something doesn't happen, uh, but that's, that's not much more than just a, a verbal promise uh, at this point. So that's what Republicans are thinking, that this is working out well. Um, Donald Trump's campaign committee, he has a 2020 campaign committee, put out a really vicious ad essentially saying that if Democrats keep this up, they're going to be responsible for all of the murders uh, by undocumented immigrants that will take place following this. Uh, so they think they have the upper hand. If you look at the polling, the polling says that about 50 plus percent of Americans blame either Trump or the Republicans in Congress and 30 some percent blame Democrats in Congress. So the polling actually suggests that it's not working in um, in the Republicans' favor. Uh, there was a poll out uh, this morning from The Post and ABC that showed Democrats with a 12 to 14 point lead in what's known as the con generic congressional ballot, which where they decided to get a sense of like where the things are, where things are going in the midterms. If that were to keep up, it would be a gigantic Democratic sweep. But obviously things can change for, uh, very quickly. This shutdown could change things, and we're not going to know uh, until Election Day what happens. I think that's one lesson uh, that everyone's learned at this point. Lamont is asking, why would either party want a shutdown? I don't think either party wants a shutdown. I think that the Democrats have agreed to a series of continuing resolutions uh, really starting from October. That's when you're actually supposed to have the budget. So it's been one after the other after the other. All of this time, the issues of dreamers have remained unresolved. And at a certain point, they're saying, hey, you've got to resolve this or we're not going to continue to support uh, these funding resolutions. The Republicans certainly don't want uh, a shutdown either, but they also are very committed to this kind of radical reshaping, or at least the White House is, this radical reshaping of our immigration system. And I also think, obviously, ego comes into play once the shutdown begins. No one wants to be seen as, as the party that capitulates. No one wants to be seen as the weaker party. I think this is something that's especially true for our current president. So in this case, do you want the shutdown? Maybe not, but maybe you want the shutdown more than you want to give up on other things. So who's responsible for the shutdown? Trump or Schumer? I don't know if that's for me ultimately to uh, decide. I think that 
when one party controls the White House, Congress, and the Senate, it's not something that's really common to see a shutdown. So ultimately, uh, that I think is where blame will lie. Clearly, uh, there's been a lot of offers by Democrats over these last couple of days to keep the government open for two days, for three days, for four days. But Republicans want to take the pressure off a little bit so that the government isn't shut down during both Trump's State of the Union address and also uh, a lot of the Republicans in Congress would like to go to Davos uh, this week, uh, which is a big uh, meeting in Europe where a lot of elites get together and, and plot to take over the world or whatever they're doing in Davos. No, it's a, it's a meeting where they discuss global issues and, and a lot of Republicans would like to go. Um, so so that's, play, that's playing into it. So, okay, thanks. I think that are, is all the time we have for questions today. Before we uh, end for today's session, there's a couple of things uh, on Think Progress that I really want to draw uh, your attention to. Uh, the first is our coverage, uh, and this is continuing coverage of the Larry Nasser trial. This is the biggest um, sex abuse scandal uh, in sports history. Uh, and there, we put together a video that really highlights some of the really dramatic testimony we're hearing from uh, well over 100 victims of Larry Nasser, who was the uh, one of the team positions uh, for U.S. Gymnastics. So I think what we can do is show you a little bit of that now. More than 140 women have come forward. That is the highest number of accusations against a single person in U.S. sports history. I have vivid flashbacks of him assaulting me. He sexually abused me hundreds of times. It has been hell. He touched the most innocent places on my body that day. Everyone trusted him. I told myself I needed to trust him too. We're gonna to continue to follow the story. One of the things about our coverage, I'd encourage you to go to Think Progress to check it out, is really a focus, not only on Larry Nasser, who I think there really isn't much debate about what kind of person he is and what deserves to happen to him, but the broader uh, effort for accountability Nasser could not have done what he did without a lot of enablers. And outside of Nasser, there hasn't been a lot of accountability for anyone. There's been a big push to push out the president of Michigan State where Nasser works, uh, which has not been successful thus far. And there are a host of other figures. Uh, and we've got all that coverage for you on Think Progress. One last story uh, this morning. Uh, there's a really interesting story on Simon Edelman uh, a photographer, a former photographer for the Department of Energy, who took some photos of Rick Perry embracing a coal executive uh, in March, believed these were really newsworthy, released the photos, and as a result was fired. We talked with him, and he doesn't regret it. He's hoping this will inspire other whistleblowers. It's a great story. So uh, make sure to follow us uh, on Facebook, follow us on YouTube. Uh, keep up with our, our videos, keep up with our posts, and uh, we'll try to keep bringing you the truth. Thanks.